Hello, we're going to be looking at bending moments, shear force diagrams for a, a slightly more difficult problem this time. And on a BTEC, this would generally be for a merit question. So what we have is we've got a, a beam. It's simply supported by a right support reaction and a left support reaction, typically a pivot. This one has what's called a uniform distributed load of 3 kilonewtons per meter. That's what that means, the minus 1. So for every meter of beam, we get 3 kilonewtons. It's, there's, a, there's a force acting downwards for that. And we also have two point loads, which is 8 kilonewtons and 6 kilonewtons. Now usually, the first thing you would always do with these is to work out the reactions. Here we've got R and L. And the first reaction we're going to work out is reaction R. And we do that by taking the total moments about R. What we have here, this, quite, this part is actually quite tricky, is we've got anti-clockwise moments about L, but we also have clockwise moments about R as well. So the first thing we would do is we take the anti-clockwise moments about this point here, which is minus 1, the distance, times the point load acting at this point, plus minus 0 0.5, that's half the distance between here and here, times 3. When we add both those together, we get a downward acting moment, acting down this direction, of minus 7.5 kilonewtons. And you can see that on my moments clock here, which I've sort of put into a, a smiley face, we've got forces acting downwards on this side, I assume it's negative, this side is negative, this way is positive, and this way is positive. So for anti-clockwise moments, total anti-clockwise moments, minus 7.5 kilonewtons. Clockwise moments are 1 times 6, so that's due to the uniform distributed load here at this point. Okay. 2 times 8, there's your 8 there. So this is once again, this is between here and here. 1 and 6. 6, remember 2 metres, so the total force acting downwards for this section is going to be 6, half the distance is 1. Yep. 2 times 8, this is the point load here. And finally, 2.5, that's the distance from here to this point here, times the weight of this section to give that moment there which is 2.5 times 3. So when you add all these together, you get 29.5 minus 7.5, which gives us 22 kilonewtons. That's the total moment, about R. So the distance between R and L is 3. So we have to divide, to find R, we have to divide the 22 by 3, and that will give us a total reaction here, acting upwards, of 7.33 kilonewtons. And I'll refer back to this probably a little bit later on. Once we found the reaction R, I hope you can see that. Yeah. Once we found the reaction R, which is 7.33 kilonewtons, we can find the reaction L here. That's acting up at this point. And to do that, we take the total downforce minus 7.33 kilonewtons, which is an up force from R. The total downforce is um, 12 plus 8 plus 6, and that's taken from this point load 8, this point load 6, and the total force acting downwards on the beam. So we've got a UDL of... 3 kilonewtons per meter, we have 4 meters, 4 times 3 gives us 12, so the total downforce acting downwards is 12 plus 8 plus 6 minus the up force, and that gives us a force here, an L, of 18.67 kilonewtons, or kilonewtons. 
and we can check that by taking moments from the other end. So if we take moments from this end here to find L, we call that taking moments about L, then we can see, I've, I've marked here, you can look at this yourself, but we've got the first moment, the weight of the UDL section here, 0 0.5 times 3 is 1.5. And then we have the weight of the UDL section here, which is 6, from this point, 2 times 6 is 12. And finally, the weight of this UDL section, which is 3, and half distance there is 3.5 metres from this point. Okay, and we also have the point loads, which are actually quite simple. One times eight, which is eight kilonewtons, and a distance of four and six, which gives twenty-four. So when we add all these together, and I've tried to put a key in there: one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. I beg your pardon. I know I make a mistake somewhere. There we go. Add all those together, it's 56. Divide by 3, the distance between L and R, to find L. 3 into 56 gives 18.66. That's your check, and that works out there. So you see, taking moments about either side, you should come out with the same answer. And if you don't, then you've made a mistake. From there, we can go on to the bending moment diagram. And this is just a sketch. I did this quite quickly. A quick slurp. So, as we've seen before, on bending moments, the bending moment at each end will be zero. The bending moment at B is due to the force acting downwards at this point and the uniform distributed load. So, at B, it's minus 1 times 6 minus 0.5 times 3 gives minus 7.5 kilonewtons and that is at its maximum there at that point there. We call this minus because it's going to be acting downwards at this point. The bending moment at C is equal to 7.33 kilonewtons minus, and this is the positive this time, minus 0.5 times 3 which is the weight of the this section of the bar here, the force acting downwards. And when you do that, that comes out of 5.8 kilonewtons. So at this point, we have a positive force or a positive bending moment of 5.8 kilonewtons. And that should also, we should have 5.8 kilonewtons directly either side. And we can check that by taking the total negative moments from C um, which equal the point load times this distance and the negative moments due to the UDL, which are minus 1 times 6, minus 2.5 times 3. So we have both of these two and the positive moment due to, so we've got the force acting upwards, which we know from earlier on is 18.66 times 2 between this section here. 18.66 times 2, which gives 37.33. So when we subtract the positive from the negative, we get 37.33 minus 31.5, which gives us 5.83. So that in that way, we've checked the bending moment from, from um, here to here. We check the bending moment from here to here. They both agree with each other, 5.8 and 5.8. Therefore, the bending moment is correct, and you got that part right. Just to go over that again, negative moments due to UDL, minus 1 times 6, minus 2.5 times 3. Okay, hopefully you can see where that comes from. And negative moments due to, uh, sorry, um, the point load times the distance. So the point load, the distance from C to here, the point load here is 6. There's a distance, it's acting downwards on this side, so there's a distance of 3. 3 times 6 gives 18, doesn't it? And then we've got 1 times 6 and 2.5 times 3, both negative. 2.5 times 3 is um, 7.5. Okay, so all of that together 
comes to 31.5. Subtract it from the, the moment which is caused by the positive reaction between this point and here and here. 2 metres times 18.66 acting in that direction. It's clockwise. So one subtracts from the other and we end up with a bending moment. You can draw that on your diagram. Um, and from that, we would get a short shear force diagram. There is one thing to note that um, the bending moments can also be found under the, if you can find the area under the shear force diagram. So as I go from left to right here, as I move from left to right, if I were to work out the area between there and there, I would be able to find the bending moment at this point. If I was to find the area between here and here, I would know the bending moment. So there's, there are several ways of doing it, but the way I showed you is probably, I think, probably the easiest. In terms of the shear force diagram, bending moments are where we bend. We have stresses which tend to bend a beam. Shear forces are forces which tend to cut, so they act in, in sort of one direction, as it were. Well, both directions, up and down. So here we've got, on this end of our beam, we have a shearing force of minus six kilonewtons, and that's acting downwards at this point. At point B, which is this point here, that shearing force has now reached minus nine kilonewtons, and that's because of the uniform distributed load between A and B, which is three kilonewtons. So minus six, minus three, gives minus nine. At, directly at this point, we have an, a reaction which is acting upwards of 18.6 or 18.7. So our shearing force acts upwards at this point and becomes 9.7 kilonewtons. And then we move down by another two meters and we subtract another six due to the weight of the beam to have a shearing force at this point of 3.7 kilonewtons. We know that we have a force acting downwards at this point of 8 kilonewtons. That gives us 4.3 kilonewtons here. And finally, 4.3 to minus 7.3, because once again the weight of the beam, means that we have a reaction of 7.3 kilonewtons, which is a shearing force at this end. And that is our check, which tells us that all of our mathematics are correct when it comes to doing this problem. It's quite a complicated and long process. It's very easy to make a mistake. So it's well worth taking your time, going back, checking your, your, um, your calculations, but also checking that these things match up. Your uh, bending moments diagram, wherever that's got to here, it should all match up. Your shear force diagram should match up as well. If that matches up, the chances are very high that you've done it correctly. Okay, hope that helped. Bye-bye.